I'm your host, Logan23. You're joining me for Night in Shining Suit, Chapter 7. The wedding was a success. Ryder was charming. Your family loved him. Maybe a little too much. Everything would be would have been fine if Brian and Jenna hadn't confronted you. That put everything into a tailspin. As a result, you threw caution into the wind and slept with Ryder. But now, you're confused by the, wh the why of it. Did he only sleep with you because you paid him? Was it all just an act? It's time to bring in an expert. You call Nicole. Why are you calling me so god awful early? Because you're my best friend and I need you. That's what best friends do and they wake up at ungodly hours when they're needed. What is going on with you? Are you still with Reed? Or Ryder? No, he's back in our room. You spent the night with him? He rented the Paradise Weed. Damn, that's expensive. I know, but I think that ten grand I gave him ought to cover it. He was great last night. You guys were great together. You have no idea. The words are a little more than a mumble, but she catches on right away. What happened, Spill? I think I should tell her everything. I got drunk, and I, um... <clears throat> I slept with Ryder. He rocked my world several times. I'm a little sore. What? You gave up your V-card. I mean, that's awesome, but, like, were you able to consent? What? Oh, God, yes. I, I wanted to even before I started drinking. But I'm worried that what if the most incredible night of my life was because I paid him? The goal is silent for several minutes. Listen, I saw you two together, and if he made love to you, then it wasn't because you paid him. I'm almost rasped. Where are you? You sound like you need a hug. Outside the lobby, hiding behind a palm tree? That is unbelievably unbelievably pathetic. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> when Nicole reaches you, she throws her arms around your shoulders and squeezes you tight. Okay, that's for the sad feelings, but you should know the plan worked. Too well. What am I going to do when my family finds out it was a sham? Don't worry about that now. I just... I don't know. You're thinking too much. You need to get out of your head a little. It's doing nothing but causing you problems. And speaking of trouble, your man is coming. Ryder is coming up behind you with your bag in his hands. His face is expressionless. Ready to go? And yes, have you checked out? I have. Did you say goodbye to your parents? No, I didn't see them. I'll, I'll call them later. The interaction feels so awkward. It's nothing like it was last night. All the magic and possibility of what could have been are gone because of you, you idiot! I'll see you later, Nicole. Give me a call and we'll grab dinner. Okay, later! The car ride home is even more awkward. Eventually you drift off to sleep until there's a light caress on your lips. What? Where? Oh! You're sitting outside of Adam's house. I guess this is it. Ryder gets out of the car and opens your door. His touch it licks feelings from last night. And you begin to shiver. Uh, thank you, Ryder, for, well, uh, a job well done. He doesn't say anything, just continues to gaze at you with his piercing green eyes. The guilt you feel is crushing. Ryder... Uh, never mind. If there was a... No, I just... Um... N nothing. I can't believe I almost told him that I've never paid for sex before. You... Oh, Jesus Christ. You just gave up your virginity. This is a pointless fucking statement. You look away, embarrassed and ashamed of how you're acting. You're about to take his ring off of your finger when his hand crosses over yours. Keep it. You have promises you need to keep. They should remind you of them. How can he be so wonderful? He looked so sincere when this was all just an act, just a charade. Pushes a stray lock of hair behind your ear and takes a deep breath. See ya, Astrid. Uh, goodbye, Ryder. I wish you all the best. You too. He turns to leave and it takes you all your strength not to call him back. How can this be? Did you ruin things? He stops and turns. It's almost as if he's reading your mind, but he shakes his head a sad little smile. Uh, thank you for a wonderful night. With that, he's gone. Your reply falls on the air. No, thank you. 
Inside, you can hardly meet Adam's gaze. He knows something's off, but he doesn't push. Huh, well, you did like it did well last night. Both of you and Van Woodson made quite an impression, so, um, good job. He's not related to that famous family. It's just Woodson. And yeah, thanks. Jenna hates you more than ever now. She's so jealous, and I thought her head would pop off on the spot. That's great. Your voice is listless as you trudge to your bedroom. It's time to unpack and get on the bit with the business of life. You nearly emptied out your bag when you find two envelopes at the bottom. What the hell? One of the envelopes has a note written in the neat script. Remember your promises. All of them. Love, Ryder. He... He gave back the money. Adam? Adam pokes his head into your room. What? He gave back the money. Adam grumbles something underneath his breath and then forces a smile before he disappears from view again. That's great. It is great. You hug the envelopes to your chest and fall back on your bed. It wasn't all a sham. Oh god, I probably won't ever see him again. A piece of your heart fractures at the loss of possibility in how you treated him this morning. That night, you fall asleep with tear stains on your face. One month later. Still haven't moved out, eh? How's <laughs> my favorite cousin doing? Still a bum. I'm either overqualified or they're not hiring. Nicole called. She said that she tried to get you back with Fiona. I made her a millionaire and she treated me like crap. I don't think so. I have a client. Congratulations. Listen before you comment, please. Miss Smarmy Pants. All right, fine, Mr. Big Shot Attorney. I have a client who wants to invest in something. Adam is taking his time, like he's mulling over his words before he says more. If you want my advice, I can't give you any. I'm struggling with my own life, thanks. What happened to listening before commenting? He wants to invest in a business venture that he thinks is lucrative, but he doesn't have any idea how to go about running the business. Blank and give Adam a blank stare, he returns it. So... It's a wedding planning. Oh. Are you interested? To work for him. Not just work, but to run the business. He wants no part in it. He just... Just wants to be the capital. Uh... Who is the investor? I mean, can I trust him? <clears throat> Adam looks away and takes a deep breath. This isn't... This isn't predictable at all, is it? I'm drawing up the contracts now, and you can trust me. I'll make sure you can come out ahead no matter what. But who is he? He has to remain anonymous. He truly only wants to be the capital in the business. I've done this several times for clients who just want to invest but don't want to run the businesses. Shoot at him a dubious look. If you believe in it, then I will too. What do you, I need to do to get started? <clears throat> Well, we'll set up a business plan, you'll be in charge, and the only person who can go over your head on anything will be me. Okay. And I can get behind that, but I'm still curious about your investor. Don't mess with this up. Don't mess this up, Astrid. My neck is on the line on this one. The initial startup fund will be wired to my account next week. You have until then to create your plan. Ah, you're the best cousin ever. I won't fail you, Adam. I know you won't. I believe in you, Astrid. He starts telling you details about the business licenses and the CPAs, but visions of the perfect weddings are already flowing through your head. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah, don't screw it up. I got it. You have full hiring and firing capabilities, and the only person that can fire you is me. Got it? Got it. I won't let you down. You throw your arms around Adam, finally excited for something, and who knows how long... Hmm. Within two weeks, you've found a place to run the business and with the added bonus of an apartment above the office. You spent time with your friends since Adam's offer. Even hung out at the oil rig and hoping to run into Ryder. But when it comes to calling him, you've chickened out every time. Still, you know he'd be proud. This is what he wanted for you. You're waiting for clients that Nicole referred to you and thinking about Ryder yet again. I'm gonna... You and this... Hmm, get around to talk to him eventually. 
I mean, it's not like he... He's called me, so I shouldn't feel bad for not doing the same. Right? You nibble on your finger to nail as you mull over your indecision. Yeah, I'll do it later. After this wedding goes off spectacularly. Wherever you are, Ryder, I'm grateful to you for giving me the courage and making me promise to do more with my life. Sitting back, you're grateful that this new couple couldn't afford Fiona's outrageous prices. It's time to get on with life. Don't be nervous. You've done this a hundred times before. This isn't any different. Your new clients, Angela and Jacob, put you at ease right away. They're charming and easy to work with. Oh! It's you. I can't believe that you'd plan our wedding for free. I've been in the business for a while, but you both are the first clients of my, on my own. I'm happy to have your wedding to add to my, my portfolio. Well, honey, she probably doesn't need the money. Have you seen the rock on her finger? <sighs> yes, Ange. I know you wanted that Harry Winston, but you also wanted a big wedding. A what? You look at the bride and groom, confused. What are they talking about? Your Harry Winston ring. It's gorgeous. I wanted one that... I wanted that one, but it was a bit out of her price range. Oh, this thing? No, it's a fake. It was a gift from a friend to remind me of a promise. Oh, honey. If you think that's a fake, you need your eyes examined. Angela laughs and pats you on the knee. You can't get her words out of your head as you walk through the different themes. Is this... This ring can't be real. The weight of the ring feels like an anvil as you're finishing up the meeting with your new clients. After they leave, you call Danny and tell him what happened. Hey, you don't think this ring is real, do you? Well, there's only one way to find out. I need a, I need a new watch anyway. Uh, Want to come with me to the jewelers? The same one we went to before? You don't have fond memories of the store. Yep, that's the one. The sales guy is cute and they have the watch I want. I guess I... I have to know, Danny. My new clients mistook it for a Harry Winston. Can you imagine that? And he whistles on the other end of the phone. He was just a bartender, right? It, it can't be real. Giving your finger a dubious look, you shake your head. But what if it is? Okay, I'll meet you there in 30 minutes and we'll find out for sure. Recognition sparks in the salesperson's eyes when you enter the store and takes all of your willpower not to turn around and leave. Hi, I'm Gary. I didn't get the chance to introduce myself with, to you before. Did you bring your card with you? My what? The card I gave you to the for the discount? It's a pretty nice one. A smile sincere, which helps you relax a little. Actually, I'm waiting for my friend who is right here. Hello, Gary. Nice to meet you. I'm Danny. Gary gives Danny a once-over, and if his home-come-hither look is anything to go by, Danny will have a date for tonight. Uh, we'd like to get my friend's ring checked out. After the last incident, we need to be sure. You know? Oh, God, I totally know. I'm pretty sure it's a fake, but I want to be certain. Gary glances down at your hand and chokes out a laugh. I don't even have to take it back. I know that ring because I am the one who sold it. Honey, that rock is real. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah. I was surprised when the guy didn't want to get it insured. You're wearing over $100,000 on your hand. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can I sell it for that? No, um, $100,000, man, I'll tell you, if I had that money, I could do so much. One, I would actually be able to take a vacation and have someone take care of my special needs brothers. One day. <clears throat> Maybe. Five carats, cushion cut with the micro paved diamonds. It's a beauty. I think I'm going to be sick. How does a bartender afford a ring like that? Because he's not a bartender. Shh. He's part of the rich family. Shh. I won't tell if you don't. That being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Head on down to the description down below. There's links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support yours truly. And until next time, stay well, stay awesome. And uh, side note, I forgot to mention in the prior video. Okay, so...
Virginity is not a 10 ton weight. Trust me. I am a virgin, by the way. <clears throat> Still waiting for Mrs. Wright. And, long story short, um, it's not a 10 ton weight. Trust me, there's a lot of people who have actually said that, that they're actually impressed with me um, because they said that they wish they could have waited. So for any of those out there that are fellow virgins, keep on. Keep it on. Okay? Keep it. It's worth it. Gotta find that special someone to give it to to let them know that you truly do feel like they are a special someone. Because, you know what? Words are just words. I can say that big L word. It can be as fake as crap. We all know that. That being said, I'll catch you all next time. Peace.